all the mental theory can really clutter your playing. And you forget about musicality, you forget about the storytelling, which is really crucial to develop something meaningful on the instrument. Today, we're going to talk about a very simple concept that I call musical shells. And that concept is going to help you get out of that rut you might be into and really embrace who you are on the instrument, which is what this channel is all about, and develop some things quite unique and sometimes really magical. And that's coming up. Hi, my name is David Wallerman. Welcome to this channel, which is all about helping top players like you find your voice on the instrument, develop it to tell your own musical story. Today, we're gonna to look at a very simple concept. We're gonna talk about musical shells, which are in essence triad chords. A triad is a three note chord that we're gonna to use to develop something new that hopefully comes from right here instead of right here. So we're gonna we're gonna really dive deep into our soul and try to find the, the core, the essence of who you are and bring that out musically on the instrument. Let's get ready on the close up, grab your guitar. This is gonna be interactive. We're gonna discover new things hopefully and uh, let's do it. This lesson is all about triads, three note chords. And for this, we're gonna talk about the three most important notes, I think, within a triad. They might not be what you think. You might have been told that the three most important notes of triads are a root, a third, and a fifth. That's almost true in my opinion, except that the fifth is not that expressive and, and I wouldn't call it as important as other notes. The fifth of uh, a note is an interval, the distance between two notes, that's, a, that's what an interval is. And if we have a knee, for example, on the fifth string, seventh fret, the fifth would be right here. On the fourth string, um, ninth fret, there are other ways, other places where you can play that because you can play the same note on multiple strings, multiple frets, but that's the sound of a root with its fifth. And that a mini chord, that two note chord, is also called a power chord. Power chords and heavy metal, rock, blues, are chords that are powerful. The fifth is a power note. It adds power, it adds strength, it adds body to a chord. And that's okay, but it's not a super expressive um, note. It's not, it's more of a, um, it, it solidifies your statement, the root. When I play that, really what you hear is the root, and the fifth just adds strength to it. It's not uh, an adjective. Now, what I would consider a, a more um, relevant triad is a root, a third, major third, or minor third, and the seventh, which can be minor or major. And you can combine these in different ways. We're gonna take a look at four, what I call shells, four of these triads, and we're gonna start making music out of them. Uh, two of them have a major third, and the other two have a minor third. Let's start with the major third triads. Then we'll get practical and, and start that. But we're gonna work in the key of E. We're gonna consider E to be the root, and for this, we'll play an E on the fifth string, seventh fret. Of course, all these shapes are movable. The first one is a root, a major third, which we're gonna play on the next string, one fret below. Again, we can play that major third in other places of the fretboard, but that's where we're gonna play it. And then we can add to that a uh, major seventh, which is on the next string, one fret higher than where we started the root. So if our root was on the seventh fret, that major seventh is gonna be on the eighth fret. So that's a shell with a root, major third, and major seventh. Okay, so that's our shell all together. And we're gonna use that in a few minutes. So that would be a major seven shell, a major seven chord, a chord made of a root, major third, and major seventh. That major seventh can be made minor, and that's our second shell with a root, major third, and minor seventh, which is one fret lower than the major seventh. So in this case, if our major seven shell was um, respectively on strings five, four, three, frets seven, six, and eight, now if we made that major seventh minor, we'd have seven, six, seven. That's our second shell shape. So we've got a major seven shell that we can move around. 
we also have a dominant sh seven shell, which is the same major third, but with a minor seventh. And we can move that around too. Okay, so those are the two shells with a major third. Now there are two shells with a minor third. The same way, one of them is gonna have a major seventh, the other one a minor seventh. Let's start with the most commonly one, which is the one with the minor seventh. We have a root, same root here, a minor third. So instead of being on the sixth fret, it'll be on the fifth fret. That's a minor third and a minor seventh. And then we have a variation of that with a major seven, which is one fret higher. Very colorful. So we have four shells now. We have what we'll call the major seven shell the dominant seven shell, the minor seven shell, and the minor major seven shell. You can move these around anywhere you want unless that shell, which is three consecutive strings, involves strings three and two together because the tuning between the third and the second string is a major third instead of a, a perfect fourth. So that means that I could use that major seven shell, for example, in E, but I can also move that to um, the same shape, but this time on the sixth string on any fret and so forth, okay? Now, if we had strings three and two together involved, the shape wouldn't correspond to the shell that we're using. So that's gonna be our rule. We're gonna build shells like that, starting on the low E string, fifth string and that's it because the others if we started on the fourth string we'd have strings three and two involved at the same time that'll change our shape but that's okay so that's our shell now let me um, give you a, a simple illustration that works in three we start with a box just a box and we don't know what's in that box a box is just a box and it can mean a lot of other things. The box is the shell. So this shell, the major seven shell, is a box, but within that box, we don't really know what it is, what's in it, until we open it. So if we open the box, we're going a little bit deeper in the characteristics of that uh, shell or that box. The musical uh, setting of that shell is going to be given by additional notes. And for that, we're going to use the pentatonic scale. For what do we call major shell, a major box, a major shape, a major triad, we'll have, we'll associate to that a major pentatonic scale. So if I have a shell with a root major third, major seventh, I can associate to that a major pentatonic scale. do the same thing with a dominant seven shell, which is a shell made of a root, major third, and minor seven. Same major pentatonic. For the minor shells, which uh, we have two of them, we have one with uh, a minor seven, we'll associate to that a minor pentatonic scale. And the one with a major seven, We'll associate a minor pentatonic scale. Now for the theory buffs out there, I know that the, the one with the major seven is gonna clash with that minor pentatonic because of the seventh, which is minor. But don't worry about that. Just think major shell, major pentatonic. Minor shell, minor pentatonic. Okay, so we, in essence, opened the box. We're not quite sure what exactly is in the box, but we see the shape of the object in the box. That's the pentatonic scale, a little bit more detail. And the shape is covered with uh, maybe wrapping paper or something. Now we open the wrapping paper and we have exactly what's in the box, and that's where we add the missing notes. That's gonna be the mode, the seven note scale that is gonna be associated with that. And there are multiple possibilities. We're not gonna get into that. I covered that extensively here. But those are the tools we're gonna use. Just think in terms of box, shell, wrapping paper around what's in the box. We open the box, that's the pentatonic scale. 
and then we unwrap it, and then we have the full mode, which could be multiple things, maybe Lydian. Okay, so three layers, basically. Um, we're really mostly going to use the first two layers, the box, the shell, and the pentatonic. And basically we open the box and we see what's uh, the wrapping paper around what's in the box. I hope that made sense. I, I love stories like that. It just kind of helps me organize my uh, cluttered thoughts sometimes. What do we do with this? Well, a lot of different things, but mostly our ear is gonna guide you through, uh, guide us through the process. And we're gonna try to avoid um, harmonic rules too much. We're really gonna go by ear and I'm gonna give you a few pointers. And this is mostly when I play alone. Now with a band where you have to match the elements, but when you're alone with the instrument, there are no rules but to um, create something that makes sense to you and that's what we're gonna do here. The first step that I would suggest is starting with one of those shells and usually the more open strings you have the better and in the improv that I did at first I used that major seven uh, box in E. E is going to be on the fifth string seventh fret and I know that I, my, my low E string is an E so I could play that. My high E string is also an E and the second string is a B and that's going to work in most cases on um, on a knee setting, whether it's a knee minor box or a knee major box. And that's what we're gonna do. So I'm gonna use that shell and I'm gonna play all my strings. That's my first step. And then I'm gonna complement with some, um, I'm gonna open the box from there and play major pentatonic. And that's where you can, um, you can choose from all the positions that you've covered in the past. You're thinking major seven, you've got a major pentatonic scale, maybe you can use that position that everybody uses, the fifth position of an E major pentatonic. Okay, all those tricks you can start using. And then you're gonna think, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give more details to my story. That's my opening. Maybe I'm gonna go to another box. I'm gonna jump from this major, major uh, seven box to another one. What I like to do, and I feel that it works all the time, don't ask me why, <laughs> it doesn't really matter, is to take the setting of the box I'm in. In this case, I'm a major box. Major, usually you would think, all right, well, that's a major third, and it is a major third that's within the box, which would be on the same string, fourth frets higher on the 11th fret. But I'm gonna use the opposite interval. It's gonna sound good for some interesting reason. <laughs> um, the major seven box, I'm gonna move it to a minor third above. Sounds pretty cool, right? So now we've got one box here and one box here, which is a different setting, a different harmonic setting, because typically you would have a major uh, major third here, but we're not gonna do that. We're just transitioning our box to the third that is opposite of the one found in the box. So that's, if I'm starting with a major shell, I'll go a minor third above. And I can continue doing that. In the same way, if I have a minor box, Typically, you would be tempted to go to the minor third above, which fits our scale, but we're not gonna do that. We're gonna do the opposite, a major third above, which is the 11th fret, right there. Fourth fret's higher, like that. From box to box, and that creates a story that is not completely in the same setting. That's kind of interesting like that, but it's, it's still gonna paint a, an interesting uh, canvas, I think. Again, this is not a theory lesson, it's just like little tricks to kind of trigger your ear to, to respond to that. I'm gonna play a little bit with that. I'm gonna start here with this box, a major seven box on um, the C note, fifth string, third fret. I'm gonna embellish that, I'm gonna open the box a little bit to see what's in it. I'm gonna add some major pentatonic stuff. And then I'm 
going to go a minor third above. And so forth. The cool thing is that even though that trick of using the same box a uh, different third above, you don't have to do that. You can actually play any fret you want because you're playing alone. This is your story. So I could play anywhere I want. I could start here in C. And then I can play anywhere really, maybe the ninth fret. Maybe I can change the type of box. Maybe I can go from that major seven box to a minor seven. Just create your own story. All right, let's go a little further. The, the next step is to find some other shells, alternative shells, so three note shells, and um, that's where your ear is kind of, uh, kind of important. You could start with an open string maybe. Here's a, here's a shell, there are three notes. One, two, three. Really like that one. And that could be part of your story now. So that shape, um, open, second fret, and sixth fret, I could use that in my story with the boxes. That works, right? And then maybe move that. Same shape, but this time we'll um, transition everything to the next three strings. That works too, that's cool. If you find something that doesn't work, don't use it. Just kind of explore some different shapes like that. If you want to go further with this, you can download the free sheet that comes with this lesson. All you need to do is visit the link below, enter your best email address, and I'll be sending you a PDF file with some of the essential positions that we've been using. That's going to be your study guide to go a little bit further. And if this was your first time on this channel, thanks so much for checking it out. You should subscribe because every week, three new videos come out. These videos are often lessons, sometimes other things, but they're all meant to help you find your voice on the instrument, develop it to tell your own musical story. Remember, nobody can play the way you play on the guitar. I'll see you next time.